consistently have enthusiasm. It's a big problem. I, I see it before. I said, how many people eating a raw food diet? This is what I got. <laughs> how many people are vegetarian? How many people eat McDonald's? <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. Ronald McDonald has a lot of enthusiasm. Ronald McDonald. I mean, that's a clown that people follow and listen to because he's smiling, he's vibrant, he's happy. Uh, and but when you see people that don't have enthusiasm, you don't really want to follow them. So, 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 so we have to understand the names of our meals. Now, the first meal we have is what? Breakfast. Breakfast. Okay, everyone at the same time. What's the first meal? Breakfast. Okay, very good. All right, that's the first meal. And that one is probably the only meal meal uh, that has a good name. The name of the meal is uh, breakfast. We're break breaking our nightly fast. Break fast. Break fast. Uh, so that that's the first part of the meal. I have a little rabbit here. Okay. Uh, that's for my trick later. Okay. Uh, down board. All right. Uh, we're not going to eat it. Don't worry. Okay. So that's the first part of the meal. Uh, the first meal today is breakfast. And we're going to continue to look at the meals. Uh, we're going to look at the names of meals. So we have breakfast. Then we have dinner. Then we have supper. Now these are the names of meals. Now some of you say, well, what about lunch? Right? Mm -hmm. What about Somebody's lunch? Say, what about <laughs> lunch? Okay. Uh, let me tell you something about lunch, okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, but basically, lunch was something that's relatively new to us that over 100 years ago, it really wasn't around. We had breakfast, we had dinner, and we had supper. Breakfast was something people <laughs> ate in the morning, and then dinner was the noontime meal, which was the biggest meal of the day was called dinner. And then in the evening, people ate supper, which was a much lighter meal, usually something like soup, that's where you get supper from, uh, that was eating uh, later at night because people didn't want to go to sleep on a full stomach. Wow, isn't that different thinking than we have today? <laughs> but that's what they had. So we had breakfast, dinner, and supper. But what happened was uh, the industry uh, and, and, and technology started to grow and people needed to make more money. So people started to work more. They didn't have time in the middle of the day to eat a big meal. So then what they did was, since they didn't have time to eat a big meal in the middle of the day was, they pushed supper or dinner back to after work, and then they pushed supper back even later. So that's what they were doing. But now they didn't want to go all morning to all night without eating. So what they had in those days was a drink. The drink was called nunch, and the nunch used to uh, tidy people over. It was a little snack in the middle of the day uh, to fill it in, so it was called nunch. It was a, a healthy drink, not even a healthy drink, just a, a filling drink. Now, that drink after a while wasn't filling people up, so they added a lump of bread to the drink. So now they had this nunch drink with this lump of bread, and then some Jesus, genius decided to combine the words, and that's where we get lunch from, which comes from luncheon, and that's where we get lunch from. So now we have our breakfast, we have our lunch, then we have our dinner, and then we have our supper. But today, we've taken it even further. We have our lunch, our brunch, our crunch, our munch, our <laughs> dinner, our supper, our, our late night snacks, our midnight snacks, or who won American Idol snacks, or I can't believe that person won American Idol snack, and it's uh, the middle of the night snack, and all these other snacks. Walking in the sleep snack. Walking in the sleep snack, and, and all these other things. Uh, so we have all these different things, and, and we're just, we, we, we don't get it. And we, you know, Let's look at the word snack, for example. You know, first of all, the body doesn't know the difference between a meal or a snack. Some people go, oh, that was just a little snack until my next meal. There's no little man in your stomach with a computer saying, here comes a meal or here comes a snack. Anytime you eat, the body has to work. The more you make your body work, guess what? The more energy you're putting out and the more sleep you're going to need, the more you're going to stress yourself out if you overwork and so on. So we have to understand that. Look at the word desserts. Spell the word desserts backwards and what do you get? Stress. Stressed. Exactly. <laughs> we have to understand these things. More people eat desserts than they eat their actually main meals. And they think it's the same thing, but they're just consistently overeating. And this goes back to what I see happening in the raw food movement. I went out with Dr. Bishop once to a, a, raw, a big raw food uh, event they were having, uh, expo that they were having. or. Some people call it an expo, I call it an overeating fest. So I went to this big overeating fest, and uh, supposedly a health fest, and I saw people eating from the crack of dawn until late at night. I mean, I was getting a grill early in the morning, and people would eat up, eat. they were up eating. 
And I'm like, what, you get up early and you like eating? They go, no, I'm still up from the night before. <laughs> I'm like, Some, something is wrong here. And this was supposed to be a health place. Yeah, and some of them, they weren't overweight because they spent the other half of their day exercising and over-exercising, doing all that. But that's not the key. That's not about enjoying life and about being healthy. We have to look at what our, what our Creator meant for us, what He wanted us, how He wanted us to live. I told you earlier, He gave us the signs that are so clear. He gave us the night light as our moon, the moon as our night light. That's when we should be sleeping. He gave us the sun as our daylight. daylight. That's when we should be awake. But let's take even a closer look at food. Does anyone have food? Hold it up to your face. Okay. You get it? We're going to take a closer look. Now, anyone. All right. The other, the other key to being healthy is you have to be awake. All right. Okay. So let's take a closer look at food. Look at a carrot. Make believe I have a carrot here because we don't, as my PowerPoint's not here, but picture you have a carrot. If you cut a carrot, guess what it looks like in the middle? It looks like an eye. Somebody in this room, take a wild guess what carrots are good for. Eyes. Exactly. You know, let's look at other things. Let's look at uh, the, a tomato. If you cut a tomato, it has four chambers and it's red, just like the heart. And do you know all red fruits and vegetables are good for what? The blood. The signs are designed right in there into what we need. Look at grapes. Grape come in clusters and it looks like the shape of a heart. And they come in clusters like our cells that are cleaned by the blood from the heart. We look at walnuts. Anyone want to take a shot at that one? The brain. The brain. <laughs> exactly. The brain. It has oils. There are certain oils in the walnuts that are excellent for the brain. Okay, I'm going to give you a tough one now. Let's see who's paying attention, okay? Kidney beans. <laughs> what do you think they might be good for? Kidneys. <laughs> okay, they're great for the kidneys. Let's take another one. Celery. Celery has 23% sodium, which is very good for the bones. And if you look at the, the, the shape of the celery, it, it's like our bones. How about this one? Avocados. Let me give you a let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint. Me and my wife, or my wife, but I was part of the deal, just had a baby. Avocado, if you cut it in half and you see the seed, it looks like a womb. It looks like a womb with the baby growing and there's so many great oils in avocado that are excellent for, for pregnant women. We look at uh, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are excellent. They look like they're the same shape and almost color of the pancreas. And they're excellent for the pancreas. Uh, and they're, they're, you can go on and on and on and on. We look at uh, figs. Figs are, have a lot of seeds and they come in clusters uh, on the branch and they're great for the male reproductive system. Uh, since we're talking about pregnancy and everything. But figs. Uh, so I have, the, you, all you have to do is to just take one bite into these foods or you don't even have to bite into them and you can see what they're good for. We won't go too far further, but you can get the idea. Okay, uh, so uh, we look at all these things, and we look at actually what the food does for us. All these foods, even in their raw form, are excellent for us, but when we cook them, uh, some of them need to be cooked, but for the majority of them, when you start processing them, then you start getting confused about what they're really good for. So again, if you have an apple, and then you have an apple pie, it can be quite confusing. Forget about what it's good for, what it even was at one point because it just is now it's smushed, something that's smushed up and not healthy. But what does it actually do for us? We look at its own little laboratory right within the food. Look at garlic or look at onions. They make us cry. You know, part of detoxing, you know, the tears actually help the body detox. And onions actually do that. They help the body uh, detox. And, and, and that's a built-in design, built within the laboratory of the onion, of the design. What I'm telling you is there are these things that are created to be made for us.